the Yuan Chen Gong, which I'm calling the Inner Palace, has nothing to do with the Akashic Records, so let's square that away up front. Except maybe it does. The case that I would like to argue before you today, dear jury, is that the concept of the Akashic Records might have been an amalgamation of multiple esoteric Buddhist and Taoist concepts dating back to writings from the 5th century BC about a realm of nothingness that is the numinous void and the expansive sky we refer to as the Akasha, where there are palaces of mysteries referenced across the Taoist canons. These palaces of mysteries that we can visit through our minds through certain states of consciousness. These references to the Akasha as a state of mind, in addition to being able to heal physical conditions through spiritual workings in the Akasha, are found in the Huangdi Neijing or the Inner Canons of the Yellow Emperor an ancient text on internal medicine that dates back to the 3rd century BCE. This lecture may be a long one, and I really hope you will stay for the whole ride. I'll be sharing with you concepts I don't believe have ever been presented in English before. So if these types of cultural practices are up your alley, then get yourself something to drink and get comfortable. I'm about to throw a lot of information at you. The Mystery Palace, according to the inner chapters of Zhuangzi, circa 400 to 200 BC, is located in the north, which is associated with ancestors and the underworld. This Mystery Palace contains all hidden knowledge, and it is located in the realm of nothingness, or emptiness, or void, blank space. This term referenced in the Zhuangzi, one of the three scriptural texts of Taoism we talked about in a previous video, is defined or characterized as the Yo, which is itself a Taoist metaphysical concept. So let's talk about it. Yo means a dream-like astral world, almost like a mirage. Or perhaps it would be perceived by humans as a, per as a mirage. And there in this realm is where the Mystery Palace is located. There's yet another reference to the Mystery Palace in the Tai Xuan Jing circa 2 BC, where the Xuan Gong, the Mystery Palace, is a place on the spirit plane or astral plane where you go to cultivate the yin and yang arts. Yin and yang arts being another term for the occult arts. You will recall that from passages in here, my book. Oh, come on, of course I had to have a promo plug. And then there's the Bao Po Zi, a Taoist grimoire dated to around 200-300 AD, which again makes reference to this Xuan Gong mystery palace in the land of nothingness. And by nothingness, I mean void, space, empty space, blank space. What I'm claiming is that the Xuan Gong repeatedly referenced between 400 BC and 300 AD is the Yuan Chen Gong, the inner palace. So what exactly is this concept of the Yuan Chen Gong, the inner palace? Yuan Chen Gong is a primordial, timeless, yet ever-evolving, infinite abode that is deep within us, but also is located in the spirit realm, Ying Jian. So it's both, equally, a place you can access through a rare state of consciousness and also conceptualized as external, an actual, if you will, place in an actual spirit realm. There is a reference to Yuan Chen that I think is pretty on point found in the 2nd century text Su Xian, chapter 3, verse 3 on Wu Shu or Wu Fa, shamanistic witchcraft. The whole chapter is about applying wisdom and restraint when utilizing magic and sorcery. The text describes Yuan Chen as something that the Xian Wang, the ancient holy kings, the wisdom kings, used to inherit heaven and earth for humanity, to receive all that there is to be offered by heaven and earth, and to utilize this method, Yuan Chen, which is to follow the yin and yang, follow the sun and the ascendant hour, and follow the degrees. In other words, there is a connection here to our natal astrology. Date, time, and location of birth has something to do with our Yuan Chen Gong, our inner palace. And that certainly checks out with running belief systems about the Yuan Chen Gong. Again, dating back to the 2nd century. 
Another quick plug, if this subject matter interests you, then please do click into the video description box and check out the written companion blog post because I keep making the editorial decision to cut out things from this chat and put it in written form. So yes, if this is a topic that is of interest to you, please be sure to check out the blog post. Xuangong, a palace of mysteries, is a concept dating back to 500 BC found in Zhuangzi, various scriptures and sutras from the Taoist canons, the Taishuanjing, the Book of Supreme Mysteries, which is that divinatory book of 81 tetragrams similar to the I Ching, Book of 64 hexagrams. Just to name a few of the more interesting sources talking about the concept of a palace of mysteries. Per the Taishuanjing, circa 2 BC, this palace the Palace of Mysteries is situated in the I kid you not, get this, the fourth dimension. In the Zhuangzi, the Palace of Mysteries can only be accessed by crossing the mysterious waters. Kind of reminds me of the Western occult concept of the Mystic Sea. This Palace of Mysteries, where immortals live beyond the mysterious waters, is located in the Land of Nothingness. The alchemist Ge Hong describes it as the palace in the land of nothingness. Its shape is the house of the gods, its form established by the spirits. Please remember the specific words I'm using because they all connect. Xuan Kong, with the same Xuan as Xuan Gong, a palace of mysteries, is the mysterious numinous void. Kong also means ether, the sky the universe. This term, Xuan Kong, the mysterious ether, is connected to Xu Kong, the sky, the ether, the infinite and omniscient, which we call the Akasha. The Bodhisattva Akasha Garba, Xu Kong Zang Pusa, means sky jewel. This is the embodiment of the Akasha. The Huangdi Neijing, or the Yellow Emperor's classic of internal medicine dated back to 400 BC, makes several references to the Akasha. When you stitch the various puzzle pieces from the canons together, the correlation between the Akashic records as a concept and the inner palace starts to become clearer. To recap my presentation of syllogisms, we looked for connecting points between the Yuanxian Palace and the Xuan Palace, or Palace of Mysteries, found throughout seminal historical Taoist texts on magic and mysticism. I'm making the argument that the inner palace in the realm of Yin is the Palace of Mysteries in the realm of nothingness. The mysterious palace arises from the mysterious numinous void. The origin point is the same. Nor North, dark, immortalized, esoteric, hidden, secret, the occult, reached only by way of yin and yang methods, occult technology. The mysterious numinous void is the Akasha, a realm, perhaps a state of mind, that is in its nature ether. Initially, I was going to translate Yuan Chenggong to Temple of the Primordial Eon because, one, that is a correct and accurate translation, and two, it sounds kind of badass. I know, I know, if by badass I mean Theosophical Blavatskian New Age Mumbo Jumbo, then yes, yes indeed. But here, look. Yuan means origin, the source, that which is primordial. It's also a kalpa, or a cycle of 129,000 years, like an eon, if you will. Chen, in addition to being the fifth earthly branch, corresponds with dragon. Its implied meaning is space designated by time, the seasons. It's also another name for the North Star. Remember the northern directional for later, by the way. It all connects. Gong means palace, a mansion, a dwelling place. It can also designate a temple. So now you see that my translation, Temple of the Primordial Eon, isn't that crazy. But for everyone's sanity, let's just call it the inner palace. The recurring numerology of the fifth order is also interesting, where Chen is the fifth earthly branch corresponding with the dragon, the constant references to five in association with the mystery palace in all of these historical texts we've been referencing, and the fifth elemental of the Akasha that the Akasha represents. I think a clarification footnote is needed here. Akasha Garba is one Bodhisattva manifestation of the Akasha, who is also the total sum of five directional emanations 
emanations of the Akasha. And so Akasha Garba is also Dharma Datu Akasha Garba, who rules the center point and embodies the nothingness and the hollow of the Akasha. Vajra Datu Akasha Garba rules the East, who represents mirror knowledge and consciousness as reality or astral reality, the real world implications of what happens in the astral realm. Ratna Prabha Akasha Garba rules the South, who embodies the Akasha that can heal us, that removes suffering from our world. Padma Akasha Garba rules the West and is the messenger of Amitofo, Amitabha Buddha, and embodies the infinite light of the Akasha. Karma Akasha Garba rules the South, who embodies the memories and memory imprints found in the Akasha, Karma. That was what I had meant by the fifth elemental of the Akasha that the Akasha represents. Yuan Chen Gong or inner palace readings are trending in East Asia right now, not unlike the way Akashic records readings are trending in the West. The premise goes that you have this palace, temple, house, some sort of an abode in the spirit world, and this place will look and be furnished in ways symbolic of your karma. There are also archives of knowledge in this inner palace that you can access, such as a book of life and death or book of life, a magical bronze mirror for spiritual cultivation, and so much more. Also the personal altar, which reveals your, your inner divine. Someone, presumably psychic, can do a remote viewing into the spirit world to look around, tour, and assess your inner temple for you. All the answers to all the things related to you, past, present, and future, projected future, can be found in this inner temple. Conceptualize it as a virtual reality because basically that's what it is. This inner temple has a kitchen area, a living area, garden, a library of books, and the inner palace psychic reader can go into any of these areas and look stuff up. This practice of inner palace readings is prevalent among Lishan Taoist lineage practitioners. Lishan is a sect or lineage of esoteric Taoism, basically Taoist magical practices originating from southern China that syncretizes a lot of Buddhism. So there's a lot of Sijia Moni Fo, who is that in English? Sakyamuni Buddha, and also the Medicine Buddha Yao Sifo, and syncretization with regional folk traditions or folk gods like Nozha. Inner palace readings, and even what I talked about in my previous video, Guan Luo Ying and visionary astral journeys to an underworld, are practices traced back to Mingyue Wufa. Mingyue Wufa is the shamanistic witchcraft of the Minan people, circa 300 to 100 BC. Lishan Taoist magical practices, Wu Shu, blends together those indigenous Wufa practices of the Minan people with esoteric Buddhism and Taoist cosmology. And then, as a lineage or tradition of Taoist magic really came into prominence during the Jin Dynasty, 200 to 400 AD, give or take. Which is to say, this inner palace remote viewing mystical practice isn't new but did experience a resurgence in recent years and is now trending for some reason. And because it's trending, it kind of gets tucked into the category of the New Age, just like the Akashic Records gets tucked under the category of New Age, though for the Inner Palace readings, the concept itself, I would make the argument, originates or can be traced back to occultism occult philosophy. Plus, because there is profit to be earned, an inner palace reading can go for anywhere between 200 and 400 US dollars, I think we end up with an oversaturation of like a lot of diluted information one would have to wade through to get to any core truths or to get to the source of truth. Oh, for some geographical context, when we say Mingyue Wufa and Minanren, we're talking about what is now in modern times the Fujian province and the traditions that later migrated over to Taiwan. So these inner palace readings can appear to lean new age, in my opinion, when you get the Asian equivalent of love and lighters who will like read your inner temple and tell you about your love life, wealth, fortune, and your dead grandma says hi and she loves you. Inner palace practices lean occult when you visit your inner temple through visualization meditation techniques and go there to purify your karma, cultivate the Tao, commune with spirit entities, or train in the various methods of Ufa on the astral plane. 
The premise goes, everything that happens here in the physical world causes something to happen in the spirit world counterpart. Hence, yin and yang. Yin jian being the spirit world, yang jian being our world, the physical one. Yang, yang, represents the physical world you experience through your physical senses. Yin, yin, represents the spirit world you experience through your psychic, intuitive, emotional, and mental senses. Your karma, and therefore your past and your future, are expressed in how this inner palace appears. Let's highlight some of the more prominent furnishings in the inner palace. There is a flowering tree of life, a bronze mirror, and if you gaze into that bronze mirror, you can see anything you seek from the collective unconscious, encompassing all of space-time. And there is that book of life or book of life and death that archives every past incarnation and also your entire ancestral history. All of this is contained within this inner palace that you can visit by way of a changed state of consciousness. Or another, a practitioner, psychic, can visit on your behalf and retrieve information and insights on your behalf because this priest or priestess is somebody who has cultivated the Tao that is required to access other people's inner palaces. All right, now let's switch gears and talk about the Akashic Records. Earlier, we mentioned the inner canons of the Yellow Emperor, Huang Di Nei Jing, which for anyone who has studied acupuncture or traditional Chinese medicine is intimately familiar with this text. It's not just an ancient treatise on internal medicine, though. It's also a treatise on Taoist cosmology. The text, or collection of texts, is structured as a dialectic, a conversation between a young yellow emperor, Huang Di, presenting inquiries to Qi Bo, a mythical healer who himself learned the healing arts from an ascended celestial master. Qi Bo himself is later deified as an ascended master. In one passage, the young emperor asks the sage, what is Shen? Shen, how do we translate this word into English? I mean, the simple answer is God's spirits, that which is of the supernatural realm, the celestial. Shen, for all intents and purposes, means a god or spirit. The word is also used in combination to form other words relating to the realm of magic and the supernatural. Magic, miracle working, shen qi, mystical, shen mi. In Inner Alchemy, Shen is also the exalted aspect of your heart-mind and of the triple essential natures of human life. It is your inner divine, your consciousness and awareness. Shen is the spiritual part of your nature. Jing is your reproductive and creative essence. This is how you feed and sustain yourself. Qi is breath, vitality, the primordial and evolving life force. If atoms are the basic building blocks of physical matter and chemistry, alchemy if you will, then qi would be the empty space within each atom between the subatomic particles, the protons, neutrons, and electrons. Fun fact, most of an atom is made up of empty space, qi if you're asking me. So this word shen also means psyche, jing shen. It also means state of mind, xing shen. In other words, shen governs your state of mind. Like we said earlier, it's your consciousness, shen zhi. So back to the dialectical, what is shen? The young emperor asks the sage. The sage, the ascended master qi bo, replies, please speak the name of shen. Shen works in accordance with shen. Clearly, ascended master qi bo never took high school English composition class because you can't use the word to define the word, master. The ascended master Qi Bo then goes on to say, well, he goes on to say a lot. It is the ears that need not hear or listen to know. It is the heart that is open and it is the primordial mind. It is the knowledge that knows itself. It is the eyes that are clear, that sees all. It speaks without speaking. And now the most important part. What is Shen? The sage replies, speak the name of the gods. The gods work in accordance with the gods. Ears that do not hear, knowledge that is self-knowing, to speak without speaking. And now we get to that critical part highlighted in yellow. The wind guides the clouds. That is called spirit. 
And remember, this statement is made within the context of what we just reviewed. What is the hidden, occulted, and esoteric meaning of this line in the context of what we've just read? And remember the opening words of the sage in answer to that question. Speak the name of these spirits, for these spirits work within the nature of themselves. Notice the master's word choice, wind, clouds. It reminds you of the realm of ether that the palace of mysteries, that inner temple, is located. The ether that is the Akasha, and one divine name of the ether is Akasha Garba, who is often depicted with a flaming sword. So when the Ascended Master gives the guidance, speak the name of spirit, he's talking about invoking spirit through the ether, the Akasha. And returning to the question presented, what is Shen? What is God? What is spirit? What is consciousness? The answer is, it is the Akasha, the numinous void. And in that realm of nothingness, there is your inner palace. What we're saying here is that the Akasha is a realm, a spirit realm, but it's also accessed via your consciousness or a specific state of consciousness. And when you access that realm, Akasha, then you will find your Yuan Chen Gong, that inner palace. So an inner palace reading is essentially, in effect, an Akashic Records reading. When reading the Huangdi Neijing, bear in mind that as you read, there is the exoteric outer knowledge you are receiving from the text, and also implied beneath that general meaning is a secondary layer of meaning, the esoteric and inner knowledge. It's both, that yin and yang binary inherent in all things. And so a passage that purports to be about one thing, which it is about, that thing, is also concealing a deeper yin meaning, like how the mysteries, Xuan, gave birth to the gods. The purpose of the skies, of wind, of clouds, and of ether is to support the mysteries and the gods. Fun note, listen to this, yi xue, yi xue. Yi xue, the study of medicine, which is what the Huangdi Neijing is all about, sounds kind of similar to Yi Xue, Yi Qing studies. I don't know, I just thought that was kind of cool. Let's look at where in the Huangdi Neijing we see references to this term, Shi Kong, the Akasha, whose divine name is the Akasha Garba, or at least one of his divine names. To prevent this video from being unduly long, let's quicken the pace. So first, what you need to know. Lots of references to breath, speech, wind, ether. And then the Ascended Master says, everything originates from that wind, that ether, the many meridians of the numinous void of the Akasha. So we've established that this concept of Shen, both the Godhead and supernal consciousness, is also the Akasha, or the two are linked, the two are accessed by way of each other. Working backwards from the previous chains of logic, the Akasha is the numinous void and realm of nothingness that contains the everythingness that we now referenced throughout the historical Taoist text. In that Akashic realm is where you will find the Yuan Chen Gong, your inner palace. And you access that inner palace through a state of mind, a supernal consciousness. And if you can achieve that supernal consciousness, that state of mind, then you can pretty much access any information, anything at all you are seeking. Or so goes the occult philosophy. My first exposure to this concept was as a child when my mom said when she went to sleep, she would go and visit people who had passed on or long had been dead, visit them in their particular palaces. And she could see what their palaces looked like, where they were, what was happening to them. So when someone we knew died, my mom could, through a method of remote viewing, and I just call it dream work, visit the soul of the deceased in a particular place. And it was that place that was sort of the focus. Uh, it was considered more important in terms of being symbolic of information we needed here in the living world. The place would look like a room, which room she met the soul in, where they went, the chronology of rooms they visited was all important. My mother would describe the furnishings, whether it was hot or cold, everything. 
what that dead person was wearing. Most important of all, what I recall, is the prominence or lack thereof of guang light. That was really important, whether she saw guang or whether she didn't see guang. And it was believed that certain individuals, because of their cultivation and their ba zi, were believed to possess the ability to negotiate a better room or better furnishings or improvements to that inner palace for the soul. Living or dead, if you are experiencing certain misfortune, you can go to the inner palace to improve the furnishings. If you're living, then it's to improve the furnishings of the inner palace so you have better luck in the living world, your everyday life. If you're dead, then it's improving the furnishings for a better afterlife. You're probably familiar with the concept of feng shui, where you want to, you know, furnish and arrange your home in a particular way. There's an equivalent to that in this inner palace concept, like inner palace feng shui. I made that word up. That's not a real word. Wherever my actual personal beliefs at this time might be positioned, I deeply appreciate the historical and cultural value of these beliefs. And it's important to me that these types of practices are preserved. Being open-minded and open-hearted to these types of belief systems allow us to find perhaps that kernel of source truth we're searching for. Plus, I truly do believe that if we take these core concepts and progress them to our present day, we can borrow from the old to advance into the new. Unraveling the fundamental driving principles behind these types of practices and beliefs might just very well be the key to helping us advance in the fields of mental and spiritual health. The foreseeable next question from someone watching this video whose interest is now piqued is, of course, how do I go about accessing my inner palace or accessing the Akashic Records or whatnot? Different practitioners will answer that question differently. So first, there's that. Since you're asking me, or at least this is my video, my talking head, my view is that it's not something you learn from a weekend certification course. It's not something you'll achieve from watching a few videos or reading a book. It's something that requires you to first know yourself, know your ba zi, your natal chart, and then enhance your strengths and work on your weaknesses. It requires spiritual cultivation. And once you've achieved the level of spiritual cultivation where you can fluidly access your inner temple, you don't have to ask this question. You just, you just already know how to. So in a way, my recommendation is that it's not a focal point goal. It's not what you seek to do or achieve. You seek to achieve a certain level of general spiritual cultivation, and this becomes an incidental benefit.